Love that song. Thank you, everybody, for sharing your gifts and your talents with us this morning. Thank you so much. So today, as we continue in our Get Busy Living series, I like to say it like that, too. Get busy living. Maybe not. Okay. Uh, I just want to talk today about um, passing on the faith, tithes, and offerings. Um, I've heard a couple times lately <clears throat> from a, a couple people, which to me, believe it or not, is kind of an answer to prayer. <laughs> now I can see. Uh, that, you know, as, as grandparents, some of you might feel like you've missed out on passing on the faith to the next generation, and that now it's up to your kids to do that, and you don't feel like you can interfere or things like that. Biblically speaking, it's never too late. Because in Deuteronomy especially, it says, pass these things on to your children, to your children's children, and to their children. And so as I got thinking about it, and I've been praying about it, and sometimes I tend to pray and wait too long, <laughs> but God still redeems. And so I'm going, to begin, I'm going to start talking a lot about grandparenting. There's something called the Legacy Coalition that's dedicated to the ministry of grandparents, to their children and to their children's children. Because sometimes when you get to a certain age, you can feel like maybe you don't have as much use as you used to. The truth is, biblically speaking, as you get older and you become grandparents, you have a priceless use that nobody else on this earth has through your wisdom, through your experience, through your knowledge. And so passing on the faith in this Get Busy Living series is we can still get busy living. I mean, we're busy living until the day that we die. We breathe our last here on earth out, but in and our first in heaven. So I want to say right off that this is not a message of judgment. This is a teaching message of trust and hope about what to do with our finances. Because most of us in America believe that we need to work really hard and then we earn our retirement. Well, I could show a bunch of statistics about how my generation and younger um, really needs to put their hope in the Lord by the time we get to retirement. Saving 10%, like maybe some of you were taught growing up, no longer will do us any good because of inflation and everything else happening. But God still requires a tithe. Tithe literally means a tenth or 10%. Deuteronomy 14, 23 says, The purpose of tithing is to teach you always to put God first in your lives. I am at that point, we talked about an upper room this morning, if there's ever been a point where you're like, you didn't trust in God. And sometimes we trust in God when we get to that point where there's nothing else but to trust in God. And for me, thinking about retirement, I got to trust in God. <laughs> There are things that I can do now. I know enough now to prepare. And, you know, the things that I had no clue about when they told me in high school, all these terms that they used that didn't make any sense. And then we balanced the checkbook. So that really didn't do me any good. But now I'm learning all those things. But in a Christian way of doing things and honoring God with your money, tithe right off the top on your budget. God gets paid first. If I make 10 bucks, God gets a dollar. If I make a hundred bucks, the first 10 bucks goes back to him. It all comes from God in the first place. It's all God's. When I went through my divorce, first thing that I thought, because God had blessed me with a place to live through all of you, is that the house of my dreams, I can give up. Because I know it's God's anyway. I don't need it because I have a place to stay easy to do because I had a place to stay. And I began wondering this morning what would have happened if I didn't have a place to stay. Would I still feel the same way? I'd like to say yes, but as I got thinking about it, I was like, maybe not. And then I realized that I might still cling to things more than I thought. We're also taught to make sure that we have an inheritance to our children. But still, when we honor the Lord by giving him the first part of all your income, 
He will fill your barns with wheat and barley and overflow your wine vats with the finest wines. That sounds good, doesn't it? <laughs> right? Moderation, that's key. But you know, how do you do this when you're on a fixed income? Right? When you know that you don't have any more money coming in because whether you're receiving Social Security, retirement, whatever else it is. And so that's why I talk a little bit more today about passing on the faith. You have probably done everything in your power and maybe still are doing everything in your power to make sure that your children and your children's children are set financially as much as possible. And so for them, they've probably never been directly taught and I'm going to make a general assumption. Probably have never been directly taught the importance of tithing and offering. No doubt we've taught the next generation to serve and to be good, to love others, especially when they aren't good to you, to do, other, do, to do unto others as we would have them do to us. But in Deuteronomy and the Old Testament, God is continually saying, teach these things, all of these things, this law, this way of life, to your children and to their children's children. Because our reliance is not on what we've put into the system. Because even that can be taken away at a moment. Our reliance is on God providing for us and for our families. And it's never too late to do so either. I've seen families torn apart because of the inheritances that they thought they were going to get and then didn't receive. But when we put God first in our lives, especially with our money, which is very hard to do, God will show up. For me, I had to kind of grow into this because I thought, well, I'm a pastor. I don't need to tithe because, you know, the priests in the Old Testament, they got you know, stuff from the tithes and the offerings, they didn't have to put any in, you know, trying to find all these workarounds. But when I began to trust God, even though I had really no money to give him, with a little bit, it's interesting that the more I gave, the more I trusted and relied on God, the more this random stuff started to show up and take care of me. But then you have to have a mind to properly know what to do with it. Not just be like, oh, 20 bucks is in my pocket. Now I can buy pizza. So we need to teach what to do with it. I remember my mom had this little thing. <laughs> it was about an inch thick, the size of a checkbook. And it had envelopes in it, like 10 or 15 envelopes. And every, every so often I'd see her like write a check and put it in there or put some money in there. And it was that budgeting tool for when you, your bills came due, you put it in there. And then when your bill was due, you just take it out, send it in. Now we have this cool stuff where you can automatically take things out of your bank account and it pays the bills for you and you know how much money you get after the fact that you don't even have to think about it anymore. Crazy. So there are things that can be set. But where should you tithe? Do you tithe to the United Way? Do you tithe to your brother who's been out of work for three years? No, that's charity. That's offerings. Those are things that are next to or over and above a tithe. Tithing is an act of worship. It goes to God. Now herein is, is the important part, right? Because when you hear a pastor talk about tithing, probably what you hear is the pastor's asking for more money. That ain't what's happening here, okay? For those of you grammar geeks out there, that is not what is happening here today. This is about you. This is about God. And this is about your relationship with him and what you do with what he has given you to use for your life and for your benefit. This doesn't have anything to do with me. Not even a little. Tithing is all about you and your relationship with God. It's an act of faith and worship. In the New Testament, Paul gives us some instruction where he says in 1 Corinthians, on every Lord's day, each of you should put aside something from what you have earned in the week and use it for this offering. The amount depends on how much the Lord has helped you earn. So Paul was collecting 
from the churches to give back to Jerusalem, especially to those who are suffering there. So the practice of tithing and offering was still in place. But what's wild about the New Testament is where God requires a tenth in the Old Testament. In the New Testament, God requires our all. Everything is God's. So now you just don't check off the list and you say, here's my tenth. Now you look at every single thing you have. So that the community of believers never goes without or is in hunger or without shelter. Everything we do is worship to God and for the benefit of one another because we love God and we love others above ourselves. And so in Malachi 3.10, he says, bring to the storehouse a full tenth of what you earn. He says, test me in this, says the Lord all powerful, and I will open the windows of heaven for you and pour out all blessings that you need. We have evidence of this in our local church. Through the blessings that others have donated to our future fund and the creation of the future fund and the mission things and everything that has come out of there. That is a legacy that the faithful have given to us to follow in. Not to use up, but to use and restore and use and restore for our community so that all might know how good and loving God is. And we are to do that with our families as well. Because God loves us. I mean, these are ways that God has shown us how to live. And how often do we say, no, God, I can't do that. God, here it is. The numbers work. Sorry, God, this is as much as I can give. And when I've done that and tithed anyway, the numbers on the paper didn't seem to matter anymore. You make your budget, you list all your expenses, take it out of your income, whatever's left, you can use. And on paper, it doesn't make sense <laughs> sometimes because when we look at what's left over, it's like, wow, I owe this much. <laughs> But sometimes when we look at that, then we give it to God and we say, God, this I've almost paid off in a year more than I make. That's impossible. But God, see, with all things, everything is possible with God. Next week, what we're going to be looking at is something called uh, Take Another Step. And Joelle is going to be walking through with us. And so right now, um, the next slide should be the revealing breakdown. Yeah. So this slide that you can't see, the slide that you can't read. <laughs> but honestly, even looking at it here, I can't read it either. But the next slide kind of zooms in on what one of these steps is. Now, for the purpose of Consecration Sunday, what we would do is there would be a list of every single step and it would show how many of our local church members are giving in that little bracket. So for the people that are giving one cent to four ninety nine, we'd see how many people are given. And then it and then it goes up from there from five dollars to nine ninety nine, ten dollars to twenty, twenty to twenty nine. So it goes up every ten bucks to two hundred and up per week. And so next year, what we're going to have is we're going to have numbers in there based on what happened from next week. Now, again, this is not for judgment's sake and to say, shame on you. That's not it. It's to see where we are and who's giving what, to praise God for what people are giving, but then also to say, maybe this year you can trust God and give a little bit more of a percentage, not an amount, a percentage of your income, even if it's like a tenth more, like not a tenth, a hundredth more, right? Even if it's a dollar more than last year. Because again, it is, it is not for me, it is not for this church, it is for you to trust in God. Because when you do this with God, with your money, which is like the thing that all of us stress out about the most usually, we can do it with other areas of our life. And God wants us the most to trust him with our stuff. Because we're to give it all to him. So we love the God, our Lord, the Lord, our God. I'm tongue-tied today, I'm sorry with all our heart, with all our soul, right? with all our being, 
and with all our muchness. That muchness is our stuff. That's kind of what the translation is getting at. We love God with our whole self and with all our stuff. And just as an example, you know, weekly, make 200 bucks, a tithe is $20. It's pretty simple. But what we're asking is you work up to a tithe and trust God. If you make 200 bucks a week, you can't give 20 bucks. Maybe you can give 50 cents. Maybe you can give 75 cents. And your prayer is, Lord, this is for you. Help me give more. Because when you're able to give more, it means God is giving you more to give. And you can't outgive God. You just can't. And so the question we are left with as we come up on May 2nd next week, what percentage of your income, of our income, is God calling each of us to give? I've taken some faith steps, um, let's see, four recently. Because I'm just trying to trust in God and other areas of my life and really trying to bring order into my house. So the faith that we pass on to the generations that follow us when we're struggling. Can you imagine if somebody says, I'm really struggling financially, and your first question back is, have you tithed? <laughs> because that is our answer. I'm trusting God financially. It's not like, well, quit being stupid with your money. Well, that comes later. First question is, how have you trusted God with what he has given you? Because then that opens up a conversation to talk about how we can trust God, not just with our finances, but with every single area of our life. Because that's the same question we can ask for every single area of our life. How have you trusted God in this? How have you trusted God in that? How have you trusted God with your marriage? How have you trusted God with this thing that you're struggling with? How have you trusted God with your job? How have you trusted God with your kids to make the right decisions? How have you trusted God? It works in every single area of our life. And the one that we can kind of control the most is our finances. And God wants control over that. So the question we're left with is, what percentage of our income is God calling each of us to give? And so as we think about that in our Holy Spirit moment and reflection, prayer that you can say is simply, God, what are you calling me to give? So next week, I hope you all can join us. We had some reservation cards for the dinner following service. If you have not filled one out and you want to fill one out, I have them up here. Um, and you'll be getting another letter this week with a reservation card in it um, if you haven't filled one out. Because we really want you to be here because this is a time to celebrate. Again, this is not judgment. This is not saying, you need to do this if you're a Christian. Now, this is a time to say, God, you are awesome, you're amazing, and to celebrate him. So, in line with celebrating and praising God, what prayers, praises, and God moments do you have this week? Or for us today? Yeah, Dave. Awesome. Shelly's over there praising God with her phone. Oh, oh. She just had to turn it off for you, I see. <laughs> Praise God. Welcome. It's good to see you. You've been here before, right? Okay, that's what I thought, because I know we've met before. The little mask thing. How long are you visiting for? Oh, tomorrow? All right. Means we can take care of the water heater today then. Yeah, all right. <laughs> no pressure. <laughs> He's like, thanks a lot. <laughs> he thought he was going to get out of it. Yeah. <laughs> no, awesome. Welcome, man. Welcome back. So good to see you. Anything else this morning? And I'm watching the comments. So Judy's got a God moment. Her mom's doing well after having the pacemaker put in, so praise God for that. Thank you, Judy, for sharing. That's awesome. 
Praise God. And I have a praise, my, speaking of pacemaker, my grandmother had hers put in too. Uh, unexpectedly, but she had one put in, so it's like everybody's getting a pacemaker lately. <laughs> put that in everybody's bag for Halloween this year. It's a pacemaker. Yes, prayers for June. As she, what, stubbed her toe and fell, was it? In the middle of the night. Hmm. Okay. So June fell. They did a went to the ER. They did a CAT scan. Everything's fine. Um, she's okay. Just has a black and blue eye. Wasn't comfortable coming to church this morning. And continued prayers as they figure out what to do with the hematoma that she's got that has developed. Poor thing. She's practically black and blue everywhere. <laughs> Poor thing. Anything else this morning? Yeah. Mm. Yes. Yes. Thank you for reminding me about that. So, continued prayers for Barb Pierce, who's up at uh, St. Luke's, um, the building next to it, anyway. Uh, she. Um, I guess long story short, she ended up with a uh, blood infection that started in her knee that they're treating her for, and she's probably going to need a knee replacement. So she can't put any weight on it or anything. Uh, this week will be, I think, the fourth week she's been on the antibiotic, and she's got to be on it to like May 10th or something like that. Um, and I think tomorrow she's talking with a surgeon about the knee replacement. So she definitely needs our prayers. And she's now, I think, out of quarantine, so she can get visitors. And she likes to do word searches, but not Sudoku. <laughs> and uh, Sally says prayers for Barb as well. And Bev, you had something too? So on May, I think it's 10th or the day, 25th, they put me under and opened me up and see what's going on. So I just keep in the prayers. Mm -hmm. So Bev was saying the just the health issues with her and Tony. Uh, Tony with the enlarged aorta, and Bev says possible tumor on the bladder, or and then going to get checked out May 25th for that. Yep. Anything else this morning? Yeah, Michelle. Sure. Um. <laughs> so high school friend's husband, Herb, Herb Bigford, is that what you said? Um, had a long stay in the hospital, came home, lost a lot of weight, but suffers from emphysema, and so he's back in the hospital. All right, so we'll be praying for him. Yes, sir? Tonight, not only is uh, wash your pigs from up in the ground, flowers, mm -hmm. Yeah. Came back yesterday and forgot about the snow. It's, it's doing well. 
Yeah. Spring is here. So praise God for that. And so all the good stuff is growing up and somebody else will add it to the weeds are too. <laughs> yeah, Nancy. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so what do I write down? Nancy realized that she just doesn't know anything. That's what I got from that. <laughs> <laughs> Cleaning up after deer and just sort of realizing how small of an issue it really is in light of everything else. Is that a good summary? <laughs> good enough? <laughs> yeah. Uh, prayers for me as I kind of start my my next uh, decade now with, you know, medical stuff. So I go in in May to a GI specialist to finally figure out what's going on. And it definitely gets worse when I get anxious. And so there's something that is going on now that's making me extremely anxious that I got to get through. So just prayers for, for comfort, for peace, and to be still for me. Well, let's pray together. God, I, I thank you for this day. I thank you that spring is here and we can kind of get outside a little bit more. Um, I know a lot of us are probably feeling that cabin fever was setting in. Um, God, we bring before you this morning Barb Pierce and June and Herb, Herb or Herb, <laughs> I just like to say Herb, Herb Bigford. Lord, and everything that they're, they're going through and Tony and Bev, we just pray that you give them strength, God, that, Lord, you would give them your peace that passes all understanding, that, Lord, you would fill them with your love and your hope, that everything will be okay. And uh, we just, we thank you, God, that we can realize and take a beat and take a step and know that you take care of us. And sometimes our problems really aren't as big as we might think they are. And so, God, I just pray that you would visit your Holy Spirit upon each and every one of us, those watching and listening online and those here present this morning, to just trust in you more and more. But also when we're afraid to talk to our families about what you mean to us and what you've done in our life, that you would give us the strength and courage. Because, Lord, you have commanded us to share what you have done and to be a witness to our families to the fourth generation. And so, Lord, help us to discover how to do that in new and exciting ways that give us great conversations and might even lead to some great healing and reconciling moments for some of us gathered here today. Lord, we thank you that you are with us, that you don't forsake us, and you will never leave us. We praise you in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. So if you'll follow along on the screen, see the stuff in red, if you want to go to the next one. As we start with our confession and pardon, let us say together, merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your love. We have not loved our neighbors, and we have not heard the cry of the needy. Did I skip a line? We're together now. Forgive us, we pray. Free us for joyful obedience through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And so hear the good news. Christ died for us while we were sinners. We didn't have to be made perfect first. We didn't have to get our house in order first. While we were sinners, Christ died for us. That proves his love towards us. 
And so in the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory, Glory to God. God. Amen. And so as we enter into this great Thanksgiving, the Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and good and a joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join in the unending hymn, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you and blessed is your son, Jesus Christ. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery and sin and death, and made us a new covenant by water and by spirit. Just a quick word here. We take communion together after we say the Lord's Prayer. And so on the night which he gave himself up for us, he took the bread and he took the wine. And he said, this is my body and this is my blood. Given for you and shed for you to make a new covenant. As often as you drink this and as often as you eat this, do so in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Lord, pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and juice. Make them be for us the body and the blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. By your spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, one in ministry to all the world, until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit and your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, with the confidence of children of God, let us pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. And so the body and the blood of Christ given for you, let us partake together now. Amen. And if today you're watching or present here and you're thinking of receiving Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, you can say a simple prayer that you desire and declare that Jesus is Lord and, and profess by your faith for salvation through the death and resurrection of Jesus. Thank you, God, for your grace, forgiveness, peace, and gift of eternal life. And so what's your next step? If you said a prayer for Jesus to come into your life, then praise God. Call me. Send me an email. Go online to our website and fill out the Connect card that's on there. If you want to sign up for an upcoming class or a group, or you want to know more about Jesus or baptism, which we're doing at Pentecost Sunday, or you want to know more about our church or our membership, uh, then email me or go online and fill out the Connect card. You can also invite someone to church or to watch online 
or to a class or to a small group, whatever they might be more comfortable with. And then afterwards, you can have a quick conversation with them about what they thought. Exciting times. Aside from all that, please join me, if you would, in our closing hymn, which is number 399, Take My Life and Let It Be. So go forth this day in the love and trust of God who loves you and keeps you and may his face shine on you and give you his peace. And all God's people said, hallelujah. Thanks for being here, everybody, and have a great and wonderful week. Thank you for those of us that joined us online. See you next time. God loves you. So do I.